demonstration, we are going to focus more on the short case approach. In a typical short case exam, you will be given approximately 10 minutes for the whole exam session. And you are expected to perform a proper cardiovascular and a general examination in a relevant manner within about 6 to 7 minutes and then to present your findings to have and have a brief discussion over the next 2 to 3 minutes. And it is very important to have adequate preparation for your physical examination. It's important to have adequate lighting and adequate exposure. And don't forget to get the consent from the child as well as from your parent. And uh, it's also important that if you have you know, adequate privacy, if you are examining an older child, especially girl child. Let's start with the demonstration. <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Mama, Dr. Kenek. Uh, Mama, Ali Baba, Ali, Ahu, Bada, Bada, Nata, Nika, Mama, Nika, Mama, Dr. Kenek, Mama, Ahu, Tika, Sada, Nika, Mama, Nika, Mama, Ah, thank you. It's good to warm your hands as well, otherwise having too cold hands can, you know, make the child uncomfortable. It's very important to look at the child first rather than going to touch your child directly. So take a tangential view and then look at the child as well as the surrounding. In the surrounding, you may be able to see evidence of having a cardiac monitor, or child may be connected to an uh, IV infusion set or child may be receiving oxygen. And also, if there is a temperature chart around, make sure that you have a look at it as well. And then, it's good to keep your child in the proper position uh, in a standard cardiovascular system examination. And then, make sure that you have adequate exposure so that you don't have to ask the child to remove the shirt once again. And look at the child and look for evidence of any obvious respiratory distress and see whether your child is comfortable or not as well. And then we initially do the general system examination relevant to the cardiovascular system followed by a proper precordial examination. So I will start with the relevant general examination. So look for evidence of pallor and look for evidence of obvious clubbing or cyanosis in fingers. So we have to see the obliteration of the angle between the two fingers, which may indicate early clubbing. Additional findings that you have to note down in the examination of the hands include look for any evidence of infective endocarditis, and also look at the child's face and the body features for any evidence of dysmorphism. And then look for evidence of wasting of the child and then go on to examine the eyes. Look for evidence of pallor and polycythemia. Then look inside the child's oral cavity and look for evidence of dental caries and look for any evidence of central sinuses. It's important to check the child's blood pressure as well. However, in this demonstration, we don't, do not perform a standard blood pressure measurement. Check the child's pulses starting from the radial pulse on the right hand. Use the three finger method and then count pulses for at least 30 seconds. 
and while you are creating the pulse, count the pulse rate and identify the character of the pulse and then identify any rhythm abnormalities. After you note them down, then feel the other radial pulse and then look for any evidence of radio radial delay and and then feel the femoral pulse and then look for any evidence of radio femoral delay which might indicate a coarctation of out. And then it's important to feel other pulses as well. And then feel the dorsalis pedis pulses on either side. Note the volume. And then the posterior tibia behind the medial malleolus. Feel for bilateral posterior tibial pulses as well. Right. After that, examine for any evidence of pitting ankle edema. Apply gentle pressure over the ankle and then look for evidence of pitting. Sometimes child may have undergone uh, interventional surgical procedure through the femoral route, so it's important to have a proper look at the femoral artery site as well. Some of the conditions, for example, when a patient is having right side heart failure, that can give rise to an elevated jugular venous pressure. And it is important to have a proper examination and idea of the jugular venous pressure aspect. You can see the jugular venous pulsation usually in the posterior triangle of the neck. And then you can see a waveform mimicking a sinuous waveform and sometimes you can clearly see uh, the jugular venous pulse with the column of fluids if the jugular venous pressure is elevated. For you to measure the jugular venous pressure, you have to lie the child down in the proper position at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal plane. And then use a ruler and then look at the posterior triangle to find out the jugular venous column and then keep your ruler at right angles and then assess the height of the column from the angle of view. We have now performed a relevant general examination to the cardiovascular system and then now we will see how we can perform the precordial examination. It is done in several stages. First, in, you do it as inspection, followed by palpation, and then auscultation. So go to the foot end of the bed and then have a proper tangential view at the precordium. And look for any evidence of respiratory distress, any evidence of suprasternal, intercostal or subcostal recessions. Note down if any tachypnea is present and look for any visible apex beat and note down any surgical scars or chest deformities like pectus excavator or pectus carinate. And, and it's important to look at the chest from the both from the front and from sideways and from behind. And Having a median sternotomy scar may indicate a previous repair of a congenital heart disease like ventricular septal defect or a complex heart disease. Whereas having a scar in the lateral thoracotomy or in the lateral area might indicate a lateral thoracotomy scar which would indicate previous repair of a heart condition like patient ductus arteriosus or application of a Balaktasic shunt or previous repair of coarctation of out. Next step is the palpation. So it's important to locate the apex. 
You can use both hands initially to see which side is the apex so that you don't miss a dextrocardia. And then once you know the apex is on the left side, palpate it properly and then try to lock it with your palm. And then you need to be precise about the location of the apex peak. So you need to count the rib spaces down from the angle of Louis at the level of the second intercostal space and then count down the number of rib spaces. So it's in the fifth intercostal space and again you have to say how much it is deviated from the mid clavicular line. So mid clavicular line is a line drawn between the acromion laterally and the sternal notch medially and that is the midpoint between the two points. So the apex I can feel about one centimeter towards uh, lateral to the mid clavicular line and it's normally tensed. And then look for any evidence of right ventricular heel using the three finger O with the ulnar border of your hand and look for any evidence of lift. And then feel along four spaces where your heart valves are to look for any evidence of threads. And it's important to feel over the carotid area as well to look for a carotid murmur which may be transmitted from an underlying aortic stenosis. Next is to feel the pulmonary area. Sometimes the child may have a palpable pulmonary second heart sound if the child is having evidence of pulmonary hypertension, which you will be able to confirm with auscultation. Auscultation is the next step and you start by auscultating the apex of the heart. It is advisable to use the bell of your stethoscope to auscultate the apex of the heart first. And listen to the heart sounds, first and second heart sounds, their intensity, character and for evidence of any added heart sounds like third and fifth heart sounds and additional sounds like presence or absence of a murmur. And if a mitral murmur is present, you can ask the child to turn towards the lateral side so that you can accentuate it. Put that in front up, one back that heavy, any back that heavy. Right, thank you. Right, I'll get it. Once you have assessed the intensity, character and additional heart sounds and presence of murmurs in the four areas, the aortic, pulmonary, tricuspid and mitral regions, you can do some maneuvers to make some of the murmurs more prominent. Kudabi, wadi enbalan, wadi vela, hodde musmak arabena pita karala, ita pasi, alo api hodde keli vela ini. Thank you. So, murmur of uh, aortic regurgitation can be accentuated by asking the patient to take an expiration and then hold the breath and then listening to the aortic murmur in the tricuspid region. And similarly, you can look for evidence of carotid threads, carotid murmurs, uh, by listening to the carotid area using the bell of the stethoscope. Right, thank you. Good. 
The next step is to look for any evidence of heart failure. We already know whether the child is tachypneic and having evidence of respiratory distress. Additional signs for heart failure include presence of bilateral basal crepitations and presence of hepatomegaly, which is tender. What about you and the bio? Examine both lung bases from behind. And some of the cardiac murmurs can be radiating towards the back. Examples include the murmur of the pulmonary stenosis, which is a harsh murmur but can sometimes be recognized to be radiating towards the interscapular region in the posterior aspect. And similarly, mitral murmur, especially the murmur of the mitral regurgitation, is known to radiate towards axilla. So if you find a pan-systolic murmur in the mitral region, it's important that you auscultate the axillary region as well. To conclude your examination of the cardiovascular system, it's important to feel for the tender hepatomegaly as well. And presence of a tender hepatomegaly may indicate the right ventricular failure and then back pressure leading to tender hepatomegaly and evidence of heart failure. So what I demonstrated in this video is mainly the techniques of performing a cardiovascular examination in a child. However, it is advisable that you repeat or practice your cardiovascular examination on children with congenital heart disease as well as acquired heart diseases which you may come across in your clinical training. And let's study some of the common heart diseases especially with a focus to their murmurs and then key examination findings that you are likely to note in each of these heart conditions.